Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Cassandra Pinado. I am a Texas Education Agency employee, and I do work in the review and adoption um, division. So I help facilitate the review of instructional materials for standard alignments. And um, Learning Without Tears is one of my publishers, so I'm very happy to be here with them. Uh, let me introduce you to Tracy. She is going to take it on over. I'm gonna be in the background. I'll be here for tech support and timekeeper. So Tracy, take it away. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much that you guys are with us today. Um, as Cassandra said, my name is Tracy Sloper and I am the territory manager for the northern part of Texas. I also have a couple of colleagues here with me to help answer any questions. Um, Virginia Nugent um, covers part of the state as well. Lori Wilson, who helps with all of everything known as adoption with our company. And Dr. Elizabeth DeWitt. Dr. DeWitt actually was one of the lead contributors to this career curriculum, so we couldn't have anybody better to answer questions. Um, when I found out that we had about five minutes to go over our curriculum, I was going to kind of bring up a PowerPoint, um, but I'm going to tell you it was really tough to just choose which slides I wanted to use. So I am going to share with you today just a really short video about um, what's new with Get Set for School, and then we can go right into um, answer any questions you might have. From letters to numbers, from the space to the sea, it's time to discover the pre-K possibilities. I want to be a scientist. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a doctor. As little learners enter the classroom for the first time with big dreams, Get Set for School, the new and complete pre-K program from Learning Without Tears, helps them explore, learn, and build a foundation for success. Through music and movement and puzzles and play, Get Set for School brings the genius of making learning and teaching simple and fun to every child and educator. Imagine all of the possibilities in your classroom with expert-backed pre-writing, social-emotional, and interactive instruction, developmentally appropriate lessons that break difficult concepts into simple tasks, hands-on multi-sensory materials that bring learning to life, and research-based cross-curricular strategies. With the right tools for a strong foundation, Get Set for School increases the educational possibilities to prepare pre-K children for kindergarten and all of the readiness, writing, social-emotional, math, science, and social studies lessons ahead. So let's play, sing, and write our ABCs. It's time to discover all of the pre-K possibilities. Increase the pre-K possibilities with the new Get Set for School program. Contact us for more information. So there you go. That's it in a nutshell. I'm going to um, stop sharing that screen, keep sharing my camera so I can answer any questions that you might have. Just a couple of notes, the things that I think separate us or what absolutely does separate us from other pre-K systems um, is those unique and purposeful manipulatives, a few of which you saw in that really quick video. Um, happy to bring up a couple of slides that show the literacy, math, social studies, science, all of the unique and purposeful manipulatives that we have. Um, the research base, the developmentally appropriate um, program that um, I'm a former preschool director. So it's very, very important to me that um, or it was very important to me when I was in schools that the curriculum that I was offering to my teachers and to my students was simple and easy to follow, um, that teachers had the ability to um, use the resources with fidelity. And what that often meant was they needed to be really concise and really specific, not so much scripted and very heavy in teacher resources um, or teacher's guides and lots of folders and things like that but concise, and that is exactly what our program does. Happy to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, and then in the meantime, uh, answer any questions that anybody might have if you've reviewed the curriculum. Let me pull up 
um, some of what our lessons look like. You know what? The best way to probably do that is in um, pre-kit. So let me go ahead and pull up our pre-K interactive teaching tool. So I need to share my screen again. Share. Um, the pre-K interactive teaching tool is the digital component, again, that separates us from many other uh, programs within the pre-K interactive teaching tool, you will have your teacher's guide, your student activity books, your read alouds, all the resources um, and assets to help teach the lessons. And I just mentioned a little bit ago that I was having trouble with my internet today, of course. Um, so this is where you will find all of the digital components for teachers as well as um, lessons. Hopefully, let me see if I can get to a lesson here. I'm just going to choose a page. There we go. So here, what you'll see is um, I'm going to show you the two page spread here of a daily lesson. Our lessons are very concise and very specific and very easy to follow. What you see on this two page spread actually is your lessons for the day, your explicit instruction for the day. Um, we've put it all on just a two page spread so that you don't have to pull out multiple resources, multiple teacher's guides, lots of folders, lesson cards, things that can be lost um, or are very cumbersome. Everything's right here at, the t um, at your fingertips. The widgets that you see here at the side are the multi, um, uh, are, are the assets that are associated with this lesson. So for instance, if there's music associated with the lesson, it simply is a click of a button. So I am happy to kind of maneuver through this and show you some of the resources that are available or leave it open to questions, whatever makes the most sense for y'all. I'm going to let you unmute yourself, or I don't know if people are dropping things into chat because I can't see the chat bar while I am. Um, yeah, it's Cassandra. Go ahead. And if you have questions, just unmute yourself and verbally ask, and you can un undo your camera as well so we can see your lovely faces. <laughs> people are very hesitant to do that these days. If you would like Tracy to just continue to give some demos and then you can interrupt with the question, that's a go as well. Anybody? Hi there. We um, piloted the handwriting without tears, um, just the writing portion. I, I don't know if that's fair to say, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the principal at the campus and I, I didn't, I'm not hands on with it, um, but I know my teachers wanted it and I ordered it for a couple of our special ed classrooms. So how does that program that we already have, how is that differing? We have the workbooks, we have the whole, we got the whole kit, the whole shebang for them. So how does that differ from what is being proposed for the proclamation? Great question. So when you say the handwriting component, you're talking about the readiness and writing program for pre-K, is that correct? I, I believe so. I know it, we got tubs, we put everything in kits. Um, each student had a workbook. They had a lot of manipulative pieces that went along with it. Um, it, it was a, we got them the full kit, so we didn't just piecemeal it together. Got you. So it sounds to me, without knowing what district or school that you're from, that you were using and are using the readiness and writing component of our pre-K curriculum to supplement whatever pre-K um, system that you're using right now, which is actually very, very popular in the state of Texas. That's what a lot of districts are doing. And the reason that so many districts are doing that is because we are the only system that has a strong enough component to help children develop those um, pre-writing skills, um, letter formation, letter recognition um, that are so critical to emergent literacy and emergent writing. So this, that is kind of one piece or one component of this program. We now include, and we had some other supplemental programs for literacy and for math. Now our complete curriculum um, includes social studies, science, social emotional learning. So it actually is a complete program. And if your question is, how does it relate to purchasing just the other pieces? That is possible as well. 
the readiness and writing program was kind of the flagship of our pre-K curriculum. And as a result of the popularity and the, frankly, the success of that program, teachers began asking for more resources. Like, do you have literacy without math, uh, tears? Do you have math without tears? And as a result of um, the popularity of those programs and in, in order to continue with that joy and that hands-on and that multi-sensory approach and the developmental approach to teaching, we then developed a complete curriculum, which includes all of the, um, all of the domains. I hope that answers your question. Yes, ma'am. Um, how do we connect, <clears throat> excuse me, how do we connect to get um, you or a Learning Without Tears um, to come to present to our committee? Absolutely. Happy to do that. If you can drop your information into the chat box, um, Lori or Virginia or Dr. DeWitt will capture that information and we will be happy to give that to the appropriate representative and have them call you um, or reach out to you to set up an in-person or a virtual presentation. We're very happy to do that. Any other questions? And if they're not, then I think if that's okay with you, Cassandra, I'm just gonna maneuver kind of through this interactive tool because I think it's the best way to show some of the components because literally the teacher's guide, the student activity books, the read alouds, these, they're all right here. And with that being said, part of our review process is to allow districts, teachers, um, uh, administrators to have access to this digital component while they're reviewing. And if you would like, or if you haven't received that access yet, please, 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 again, drop your email um, into the chat box, either privately or whatever, and we will be happy to get each member of your committee access to this. Because not only will it allow them to see the teacher's guide and all of the components, obviously they won't get to get their hands on the many, many multi-sensory um, manipulatives that we have through this um, avenue, but they'll get to see how we use them within those lessons. Um, in addition to that, I have had many districts actually once they get their uh, pre-K interactive teaching tool login, actually try out some of the lessons in their classrooms, actually try using um, whatever, some of the readiness and writing lessons or some of the social emotional lessons as you can see here. So I will quickly, just since I have about eight more minutes, kind of run through these tabs that you see here on the left-hand side so you can see what we're talking about. There are two teacher's guides associated, but only two teacher's guides. That's what I believe as a former preschool director, one of the first things that I loved about this program was that there were only two teacher's guides, only two to keep up with and, and easy to follow, concise. Plus, I don't have to drag all you know folders and folders folders into a planning room or into a, to take them home or whatever. These are all right at the um, at their fingertips. Volume one is where you will find um, kind of this uh, information about the setup, classroom management, um, resources, uh, learning about our hands-on resources. Um, sample schedules, things of that nature. So this is more of a resource, I guess, about the entire um, overview, I guess, is the best way for me to describe it. Volume two is where your teachers are going to spend their time. This is the teacher's guide that they're going to use every single day. This is where they're going to go to find their lesson plans. They get to look at a whole week in review. And then from there, look at daily lessons, as I showed you on that two-page spread very simple, very easy, very concise. Again, what I love about this is your explicit direct instruction for the four lessons that you see right there, language and literacy, numbers and math, um, readiness and writing, and then oral language. They're all right there. And they're also cross-curricular. We use um, icons to identify different bench benchmarks that we are um, learning in those lessons. For, so for instance, in this numbers and math activity, you can see that we also have social emotional um, lesson going on. There's physical movements, so gross motor activities. We are combining um, multi-sensory activities together to incorporate it into one lesson. What I love about it is that 
it offers enough support for your teachers that need that support. And they can, again, if they need additional support, they can reference back to volume one. But what I also loved about it is I had some very tenured long-term teachers that had collected years and years and years worth of resources for special weeks like Dr. Seuss week or Johnny Appleseed week or, you know, fall, you know, jumping into fall. And so this really allows them to still use those lessons in the, in their classrooms to have that flexibility with, while still being able to incorporate um, the daily lessons. So it's not so prescriptive that they feel like they can't use their tried and true lessons. You also have access to the student activity books, um, the My First School book, which is our the readiness and writing book that you were referring to a few minutes ago. Um, and I apologize for the speed of my internet today. It is very sad. I should tell my husband to get question, off. Down. Tracy? Yep, yep. Uh, it's Cassandra. Someone yeah. uh, wrote in the chat, but I think Lori is doing a great job in answering, but they did ask, can you talk about the progress monitoring your program? Has. Yep, absolutely. And Dr. Dewitt, okay, that so might be one that Dr. Dewitt, that might be one that you want to address specifically. Um, but let me quickly say we have a couple of different um, ways that we do that, and we monitor progress daily in our lessons. So every single lesson has a um, check for understanding. So we're monitor monitoring it that way. We have uh, classroom observations, and then we also have benchmark assessments right here. But I'll let Dr. DeWitt kind of share some information on that as well. Sure. Can you hear me? Yep. Can hear you just fine. Okay, great. So when she references, so we have daily, at least weekly, and then we have periodic, which is your benchmark. So our daily is checked for understanding, like Tracy mentioned. And then we have your weekly, at least weekly is what we say, because you can use it more than once a week. Those are our classroom observation checklists. And then we have the periodic, so beginning, middle, and end of the year. But we're also compliant with CIRCLE, and we have correlations to that. So if your school district requires that you use CIRCLE as part of your assessment, we're, we're aligned to that. We can provide you with that documentation. So we do provide, you know, assessment that goes right along with our program, but it really goes along with childhood development is the key piece and um, which makes it so easy to fit along with circle. And I hope that's helpful to you because we want to make sure that we're helping you with whatever assessment that you have to use based on your district requirements. And I am going to drop into the chat box that correlation document. I think, hopefully. Thank no, you, the chat, the chat box actually is not available for me because I am sharing my screen. So um, I will as soon as I figure out how to. I guess if I stop sharing my screen, I don't want to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, stop sharing your screen and then you can do it again. Yep, let me do that. Yeah. That should be fine. There we go. I just Elizabeth, this is Lori. Someone also asked, how does your curriculum support the students that are being assessed virtually? What you have to do is have one on one. And that I know that's not easy, but in order to um, use any developmental assessment, even if you're doing a diagnostic. So if you were take it out next level, if you're a psychologist, developmental psychologist or something like that, you still have to be able to um, use any assessment virtually and have a one-on-one -on -one where you're engaging with the children, you're establishing rapport, and then you're utilizing the resources there in their home. And so it's what we provide for our assessments that we have there on the pre-K interactive teaching tool. It's super easy to use. We don't ask for like crazy bonkers um, assessment tools. It's basically, can you identify a shape? You know, we're, it's really basic questions, but they're aligned to developmental standards for four-year-olds to ensure that they are on the trajectory that they need to be on. So be rest assured that if you're utilizing our assessments, that your students will be successful. I saw that somebody also asked about the correlations, whether we identify within each lesson what, um, the correlations to um, the Texas pre-K guidelines. And somehow I lost my screen. 
Um, I will also drop into the chat box those correlations. They can be found on our website, on our Texas-specific website. So I have dropped those in there as well. Awesome. Um, this is Cassandra. We're like seconds away from uh, 220, our time. So if you want to stay for the next session, feel free. If you didn't have a chance to ask some questions, um, and you can join the next the next block. So we are now at 220. So this block is over. Thank you so much, uh, Learning Without Tears. And um, we'll get ready for the next group. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cassandra. You're welcome. Cassandra, I think I sent that to you in a private message, the circle progress monitoring. Is it, let me, I meant to send that to everybody. So let me send that real oh. quick. I don't know why I did that. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. Go. Yep. Oh yeah, I see that. <laughs> Didn't even notice. All of these sessions I forgot to mention are being recorded. All the chats are being recorded. Awesome. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to go back to that short video then. And um, I did not mean to jump in there to answer not to at all. Color up that question. Laura, are you going to monitor the chats or do you want help with that or? No, it's fine if you want to jump in too. I think everybody's trying to uh, do it, you know, <laughs> monitor everything. So it's great. I don't yeah. mind. And I can't see the chat when I'm presenting, so don't feel bad at all about jumping in. If okay. I'm, that's why I have my colleagues on here with me. We're all doing so that they can, anything that they can't answer in chat or they think the entire group needs to see, they'll certainly um, go ahead and um, interrupt as needed. Okay. So no sending you a private message. Mm -hmm. your, time, your time's up. <laughs> because you won't see it. <laughs> right, I can't see it. You can go ahead and interrupt. I'm trying to watch the clock though. I'm trying to watch the clock there at the you're bottom of good. my the bottom of my screen there, so. Yep, you're doing good. Ah, stop. Tell me again what time is the next session at 2 30? It's at 2 25. 2 25. Okay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember what that, and I didn't want to bring that up on my screen. Are you guys able to um, rename yourselves and put? I'm going to do that. Let me see if I could do that. I'm going to put LWT in front of your name so everyone can see. Who belongs to, right, got you, smart. Yeah, I've noticed that I don't have any controls over anything as far as my naming conventions, my audio, exactly. Um, yeah. So that would be great, Cassandra, if you could help with that. Sure. And Virginia, correct? Yes, Virginia Nugent, myself, and Lori Wilson. And Dr. DeWitt? Dr. DeWitt. Okay. Yes, Okay, ma so I have. Sorry, I have South Alabama. Oh. Yes. Looks like we have a few more people, a lot more people. It's nice. That is nice. 
Virginia, maybe you could drop um, the circle and the correlations as we get to that part, if there's any questions, that way I don't have to stop sharing my screen um, because I know you have those at your... Um, yep, I'll take care of that. Yep, and Patricia asked a question. I don't know if that was from the last sentence. Oh, did you say, did you answer her question about the hard copies? Okay, got you. Okay, hello everybody. My name is Cassandra Pinado and I am an employee of the Texas Education Agency. I work in review and adoption. Um, I help facilitate the review and adoption of instructional materials for um, standard alignment. And I am also the liaison for learning without tears. So it makes me happy that I'm facilitating the room today. And I'm gonna turn it on over to Tracy so she can start her presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tracy Sloper, and I am one of the territory managers here in the lovely state of Texas. I am also a former preschool director, so I love talking pre-K. Um, I could probably talk it about it all day long. So 20 minutes seems short to me. Um, I also have a couple of colleagues with me today that are gonna help monitor chat because I can't see the chat box while I am presenting. Uh, Virginia Nugent, who is another one of the territory managers. Lori Wilson, who is our um, adoption expert extraordinaire. It helps us with um, everything um, and helping with TEA. And then Dr. Elizabeth DeWitt. Dr. DeWitt is the lead contributor, uh, contributor to this curriculum. She was instrumental in its development. Um, they are, so I couldn't have anybody yet better to answer questions for you today. I am going to begin by sharing a really short overview video about um, the Get Set for School curriculum and then jump into our pre-K interactive teaching tool, which is uh, the digital component for teachers so that I can show you some of the teacher's guides and things of that nature. I hope I'm sharing my screen, I think it is. <laughs> From letters to numbers, from the space to the sea, it's time to discover the pre-K possibilities. I want to be a scientist. I want to be a teacher. I want to be an actor. As little learners enter the classroom for the first time with big dreams, Get Set for School, the new and complete pre-K program from Learning Without Tears, helps them explore, learn, and build a foundation for success. Through music and movement and puzzles and play, Get Set for School brings the genius of making learning and teaching simple and fun to every child and educator. Imagine all of the possibilities in your classroom with expert-backed pre-writing, social-emotional, and interactive instruction, developmentally appropriate lessons that break difficult concepts into simple tasks, hands-on multi-sensory materials that bring learning to life, and research-based cross-curricular strategies. With the right tools for a strong foundation, Get Set for School increases the educational possibilities to prepare pre-K children for kindergarten and all of the readiness, writing, social-emotional, math, science, and social studies lessons ahead. So let's play, sing, and write our ABCs. It's time to discover all of the pre-K possibilities. Increase the pre-K possibilities with the new Get Set for School program. Contact us for more information. So that is just a very, very quick um, overview of the pre-K um, of the Get Set for School curriculum. We're very excited to share that with you. Um, we actually, um, I think what separates us dramatically from other pre-K programs, and I can't find my pre-kit now, Cal um, Let's see, there we go. Um, separates us from other pre-K systems is those unique and purposeful manipulatives. They are exclusive to learning without tears. And we are using those to engage and help children um, build that love for learning. We know that pre-K students learn best by doing and by um, using their senses. So this program is very, very rich in um, multi-sensory 
uh, resources for the children to learn. And when we think about today's classrooms, I want you to think about the students that will be coming into your classrooms, not only next year, but probably for the next couple of years as the pre-K enrollment has declined so much in the state of Texas. What are those children doing right now? What, what are your children, your little three-year-olds that are coming to your classroom next year as four-year-olds, what environment are they in right now, right this very moment? And I would say that many of them are not in a formalized preschool program um, because many of them are still struggling through this COVID um, stuff. So we have to take into account those children's individual student development and how it's going to be different maybe this next coming year, or the next couple of years where they're not being exposed to those things where there's rich language development or, um, you know, they're developing their academic behaviors or, you know, the social interactions. So we feel like the Get Set for School program and its multi-sensory approach is best for that rather than being a watered down kindergarten program. So with that being said, I did my five minute spiel. I am going to open the floor to questions. Um, and if there aren't questions, then I will go to the pre-K interactive teaching tool to review some of the resources that we have available. I assume that some of you guys have had the opportunity to review. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to review our resources, either digitally or with um, samples, um, we would love to share that with you. We would love to share digital samples with you. If you drop your email address um, into the chat box, either um, your email address is probably great. We give digital um, logins to every person on the committee. So if you'll just let us know how many you need, um, it will allow your teachers to really view things um, from a digital perspective, which I'm gonna show you. We're also happy to send you kind of sample boxes that have some condensed samples of some of our hands-on resources, as well as some of the lessons, et cetera. Hey, Tracy, so we, we have, have a couple questions. of questions. Go ahead, Lori. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Lori. Uh, one is, will the curriculum address pre-K three-year-olds and is there an opportunity to pilot with a few lessons? Do we want Elizabeth to uh, address the three-year-olds? Let's start with yep. that one. Go ahead, Elizabeth. I'll let you address the three-year-olds and then I'll address the pilot. Sure. So when we talk about three-year-olds, um, ideally, as aligned to the TPG, so when you look at the TPGs, the Texas Pre-Kindergarten Guidelines, they're essentially built for four to five-year-olds. So that would be children who are four who might turn five during the pre-K year. And so essentially everything's built around that developmental level. However, at the same time, we do include suggestions for three-year-olds because we do know that there are three-year-old programs. And if you have a huge three-year-old program, I'd advise you to really reach out to your Texas representative from our company because we can customize further. But we do have um, suggestions throughout our curriculum of how to address three-year-olds. But ideally, overall, we are aligned to the TPGs which outlines what you need for four to five-year-olds. But we know that as you know, educators like myself, I taught three, four and five-year-olds at the same time, that you need to address three-year-olds. So we do have that covered, but if you want it more in-depth or more guidance, we do have that available for you on a um, school by school basis or district by district basis. We're here for you, but understand that overall the curriculum is aligned to the TPGs. We also offer, you can see um, as I'm sharing my screen here in those individual lessons, this is a two page spread for a lesson in unit one week four. And you'll notice that supporting um, down there under check for understanding, we also give some support or ELL strategies. I think these are beautiful for three-year-olds. Again, um, aside from what Elizabeth said, I think built within every lesson, there's always some opportunities yes. to simplify it or as you see on the enrichment to modify it, to add some complexity or add some other um, for those students that need a little bit to be challenged a little bit more. So yes, and with respect to the piloting of um, 
We do have specified pilots. And again, like Elizabeth said, we would love to talk to you specifically about what your idea of piloting is for your school district, because we absolutely want to accommodate you. Um, if you will, again, drop your, if you're interested in a pilot, drop your name and email address into the chat box and we'll be gathering, capturing all of that so that we can send that to the appropriate representative to reach out to you to figure out what makes the most sense for your district. Tracy, Tracy we also have one more thing. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Ah, it's probably great minds think alike. Right. Um, I just want to say one more thing. This is Dr. Elizabeth DeWitt. One more thing that I want you to you all recognize is that the way we're set up is in a developmental progression. And when I say I taught three, four, and five year olds at the same time, we are conscious of three year olds in everything, they suck up everything as sponges, but we also follow that developmental progression based on research. And so what we're doing with four-year-olds um, really resonates with three-year-olds, but we do need to customize it a smidge if you want to um, start with children who have zero experience, but it's so easy to do. But we have everything laid out for you. The framework is here. You just need a smidge of guidance because you have those of us who have that experience of working with three-year-olds and, uh, and how that projects, how that builds and steps into what your four-year-olds will be doing the following year. Tracy, could you also show them the Spanish teacher's guide in there? Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up, Virginia. I forgot. I am actually in the pre-K interactive teaching tool, the digital teaching platform um, and component that teachers will have at their fingertips with the adoption. It comes with the adoption. And what this does is allow teachers to have their teacher's guides, the student activity books, all of the resources really right here at a touch um, of a button, To um, frankly. And we have it available in both English and Spanish. Um, you can easily toggle back and forth between the English and the Spanish um, resources, um, which is incredibly valuable in those um, bilingual dual language classrooms, Spanish classrooms. Um, and again, I apologize for the speed of my internet today. I was really pretty conscious of that this morning and it wasn't a problem, but here you go. Um, so all you have to do is just a simple toggle of a button. So those very same lessons right here in Spanish. Same goes with the um, student activity books, as well as um, the Matman read aloud. So here, if I'm using the read aloud, um, obviously, it's going to read to aloud in Spanish, but if I toggle back to the English version, it is going to read, um, read it aloud in English. Si le diéramos un sombrero a Matt Man, ¿qué haría? Da vuelta a la página y lo verás. So that, um, very easy to toggle back and forth between the English and the Spanish. If we gave Whoops. Matt Man a Let me hat. get out of the Matt Man book so it doesn't read to us the whole time. Tracy, we had another question about assessments. What is used for common formative assessment and is it built into lessons? I'm going to let Elizabeth answer that question while I actually, well, I'll go to an activity page where um, in this teacher's guide and let Elizabeth answer to that while I toggle back and forth between that. Hey. Tracy, it's Tara. Can you maybe unshare and reshare? It's your screen. It's blurry. Behind. Thank you. Sorry. It's probably because there's so many cameras and such on. Maybe I'll turn my camera off also. That might help. So let me reshare. And this is Elizabeth. I'm happy to talk about the assessment. So um, as we shared earlier, you have the daily. So in each lesson plan, so here you have this two page spread. There are four plans here for your day. And in each one, you have a little check mark that says check for understanding. So it's kind of your check. So at point of use, you have an opportunity to check what students are, are doing, what they're understanding, and quickly reevaluate if they understand you need to reteach, what needs to happen here. But we also have the classroom observations. We suggest those at least once a week. And that's at least once a week. 
So as for myself, as a former teacher, I would do at least three times a week for myself, but for everyone else, you know, everybody's going to be different. So we suggest at least, at least once a week. So you're looking at overall developmentally, what are children doing? Are they listening and responding to directions? That's key. There's so many different pieces and parts that fit into different domains from social emotional to language and literacy to pre-writing readiness, uh, math, science, social studies, and technology. So what we've provided for you outside of what you're required to do, whether that is teaching strategies or circle, we have additional assessments for you free of charge. There's no free, you know, no fee to that for you to access that, but to be able to assess students. So for myself, what I would do is um, I worked in an inner city public school and when they did dibbles, which was three times a year, beginning, middle, and end, I would also do the pre-K assessments and put that in at the beginning, middle, and end. So I had a baseline. I knew where we were at the middle of the year, and I also knew what we, where we were at the end of the year. And so this is what we provide if you need it in addition to or outside of what your school district or school is requiring. Virginia, can you drop the circle correlations into the chat box since I'm sharing my screen and I can't do that from here? That would be great. Thank you. What you see on the screen there too is our literacy assessment that one of the assessments that um, Dr. DeWitt was referring to. And I'm always happy happy to chat one-on-one -on -one with anyone who would like uh, additional assistance, but I hope that was um, enough information uh, just to get you to the next step. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, we also have a question about, does this include a strong phonemic awareness and follow the science of reading? It does have a strong phonemic awareness. So with the language and literacy piece, it kind of pulls out some essential pieces from developmental research. So it, it, it's not aligned to any particular like research or anything like that as far as like an assessment, but it's looking at the key components of phonological awareness aligned with what we're doing in the curriculum to make sure that children are kindergarten ready. We're also using those unique hands-on manipulatives to support that instruction. So to support it in a very um, interactive and engaging way, for instance, the use of our sound around box, um, it is a very, again, it's exclusive to um, Get Set for School. And we use that to support the uh, emergent literacy, just one of the many resources that we use to support that uh, emergent literacy in a very um, developmental way, but more importantly to me as a former preschool director in a very engaging um, and purposeful way. Tracy, I think you're absolutely right. So we have manipulatives that are unique to us because we had them created. So we're, we didn't purchase from someone else. We had things created specifically for our curriculum and um, we utilize those to the utmost extent. But at the same time, we're also trying to foster, you know, a great love of learning, of literature, of just discovery and play and purposeful play. We're, you know, looking for children to want, want to learn, but they don't even realize why, because they're having so much fun. And that's our key goal is that learning can be engaging and fun, not arduous in any way. And, and we want children to embrace that. So that's what you have in front of you it, through the Get Set for School is just learning in a fun, engaging way that's just unlike any other. I'm sharing with you on the screen right now some of those unique manipulatives that um, we are uh, referencing, which includes, again, the sound around box, the line it up that are so um, awesome for um, emergent literacy, but then we have math, social studies, science, um, all unique. And again, you can re uh, reference these and take a look at these. All you have to do is just drop your email 
address in the chat box and we'll be happy to send you the logins, um, uh, the digital logins to be able to not only access pre-kit, but to try pre-kit out in your classroom. You can take some of these lessons, do the Matman read aloud books, take a lesson that, um, and you wanna try it out in your classroom, you will have the ability to be able to do that as well as to see um, all of the components of the hands-on multi-sensory manipulatives and tools. Any other questions, Lori, that we need to address specifically here? Yes, yeah, sorry, I had to take myself off of mute. Um, a question about what components support family engagement and or home and school connections? Love that question. We actually know the important- We're out of time. Sorry, that's time, we're out of time. and. We have to stick to it. So if um, they weren't able to answer any of your questions in the chat, if you can send them your email address, maybe someone after this, I am gonna make sure they get everything in the chat that um, someone from Learning Without Tears can email you a response. Feel free to stick around for the next session. If you want to have your question addressed, um, then maybe they can do it during the next session. I apologize for the quick time. I know it goes by so fast. Um, but thank you, and we'll get ready for the next block. Perfect. Thank you, Cassandra. Hello, everybody. My name is Cassandra Pignato, and I work for the Texas Education Agency in the Review and Adoption Unit. I help facilitate the review and adoption of instruction materials um, for standard alignment, and I'm the liaison for Learning Without Tears. So I'm very happy to be their facilitator here today in their breakout session. And I'm going to turn it over to Tracy. But first, just real quick, let you know I'm here for uh, time keeping, but if you have questions and you type them in the chat, include your email address because in the event they cannot answer them during this session because time is flying, um, they can then email you a response. Thank you. Tracy, take it away. Perfect. Great idea, Cassandra. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tracy Sloper, and I am one of the territory managers here in Texas for Learning Without Tears, Get Set for School. I am also a former preschool director, so I love talking pre-K, so 20 minutes is a really short time for my Gabby mouth. So I appreciate y'all being here today. I have a couple of colleagues with me that are helping to monitor chat so we can answer those questions as quickly as possible in that short 20-minute time. I have have Virginia Nugent, who is another territory manager here in Texas. Lori Wilson, our, um, our, our adoption expert extraordinaire that's helping um, throughout this entire adoption process. And Dr. Elizabeth DeWitt, who is the leading contributor for the development of this curriculum. And she, what better person to answer any questions um, that you may have. I'm gonna start by stop sharing my camera so that I don't take up some bandwidth. And I am going to share with you a really quick overview video. So let me share my screen. From letters to numbers, from the space to the sea, it's time to discover the pre-K possibilities. I want to be a scientist. I want to be a teacher. I want to be an actor. As little learners enter the classroom for the first time with big dreams, Get Set for School, the new and complete pre-K program from Learning Without Tears, helps them explore, learn, and build a foundation for success. Through music and movement and puzzles and play, Get Set for School brings the genius of making learning and teaching simple and fun to every child and educator. Imagine all of the possibilities in your classroom with 
expert-backed pre-writing, social-emotional, and interactive instruction, developmentally appropriate lessons that break difficult concepts into simple tasks, hands-on multi-sensory materials that bring learning to life, and research-based cross-curricular strategies. With the right tools for a strong foundation, Get Set for School increases the educational possibilities to prepare pre-K children for kindergarten and all of the readiness, writing, social-emotional, math, science, and social studies lessons ahead. So let's play, sing, and write our ABCs. It's time to discover all of the pre-K possibilities. Increase the pre-K possibilities with the new Get Set for School program. Contact us for more information. That is a very quick overview of the um, Get Set for School curriculum. We actually, I think um, one of the things that is important for me to share that separates us from other systems that you may be looking at is a, our very deliberate and purposeful uh, multi-sensory and developmental approach to helping um, in, in the pre-K classroom. And thinking about that pre-K classroom, I want you to think about those children that will be coming to your classroom over the next couple of years that probably are not in formal preschool settings right now like they may have been in the past. So they will have very unique developmental needs. And what better way to address those needs than with a multi-sensory approach to teaching early literacy, math, science, social study skills, as well as social emotional skills. Because again, they're not socializing in many cases with other children right now due to what's going on um, with COVID. So with that being said, um, that was, wow, that was only four minutes. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Um, I would love to open the floor for questions as well as go ahead and bring up our pre-K interactive teaching tool so that you can see. Um, this is the digital component. The pre-K um, interactive digital teaching tool is the teacher platform that will allow you to have at your fingertips all of the assets, aside from the multi-sensory assets, but at least here you will be able to see the teacher's guides, the student activity books, the mat, um, our mat man read aloud, the resources, um, the apps, things of that nature. So I wanted to bring that up because it's probably the best way for me to show you some lessons. Um, but before I do that, I'm gonna see if there's any questions before I just dive in there. You can unmute yourself or you can drop them into chat, but I can't see chat. So my colleagues would have to answer those for you. There's a question from Maria. Is the sequence of literacy learning in Spanish authentic to learning to read in Spanish or is it a mirror to the English approach to learning to read? Dr. DeWitt. Thank you, Tracy. Um, thank you, Virginia. So what we do provide is an alignment to um, not only the English, but also the Spanish approach so that we do address digraphs and cognates and assist teachers in emphasizing uh, the benefits of the Spanish language within our curriculum. If there's no other questions, I'm going to, I was leaving it a second there for people to chime in to unmute themselves. Um, I'm just going to quickly walk through um, the pre-K interactive teaching tool, because this will allow you to kind of see the components um, uh, of, of the teacher's guide, the activity books, and things of that nature. Part of our digital review process is to allow teachers and um, committee members, uh, administrators to have access to this component um, for review purposes, as well as to try out some of the lessons. So if you have not yet received your login, username or password, if you haven't requested that yet, please do so. Drop your name and email address into the chat box and we will capture that and make sure that you get digital logins. Include the number of logins that you will need for each one of your committee members and we'll make sure that you get that. You also can request uh, physical samples there if you're interested. But I think this is a great way for you to see 
the teacher's guides, as well as the student activity books. Um, we actually only have two teacher guides. We felt like for the ease of implementation as well as for the ease in planning for teachers, it was best to organize all of their resources in just two teacher's guides, not multiple folders, not multiple um, lesson cards that can be lost. Um, I think I mentioned I'm a former preschool director and I have used some of these other programs or other systems within my preschool. And sometimes I found that they were a little too cumbersome with respect to um, things like lesson cards and teacher's guides and things like that. So we just have two. Volume one is where you're going to find all of the background information, the research, the information about our multi-sensory resources, how to set up your classroom or suggestions for setting up your classroom, suggestions um, for uh, centers, information about our multi-sensory resources, scheduling, things of that nature. Volume two is where you're going to spend your dot day. This is where you will spend um, every day um, plan for your planning purposes as well as implementation purposes. And here is where um, your daily lessons, your weekly overview will be here. So you can look at your week in a glance and, and kind of look at that and understand what the objectives or the, the, the week snapshot of the week, as well as your daily lessons. What you see on the screen here is a two page spread. And these are your explicit lessons for this particular day, week four, day five. Um, and it's all right there on a two page spread. And within that, um, from that, I should say that you can easily toggle back and forth between the English and the Spanish version um, of the pre-K interactive teaching tool, which is beautiful for bilingual as well as, um, you know, dual language classrooms, or if a teacher just wants to go back and forth to see um, English or Spanish assets. Um, I apologize again for the slow pace of my um, computer today. I apologize for that. Going back to that two page spread um, while it's loading, you can see those widgets or those icons there, the music notes, the smiley face, the um, little, little pencil with the, with the um, arrow on it. These are assets that are related to the lessons that you see on that page. So literally, if you are teaching in your classroom, you can very easily just go to the click of a button and play something like a, a, a live teaching video. This is a classroom singing crayon song. song. Um, you can do where there's live teaching videos, animated videos, music, um, what you see here is a click away. Those are home, very often home uh, school to home connections where you can actually, it's a download that you can send home to families um, to support or to share with them lessons that are taking place in the classroom. Um, from there, we have the activity books that again are there at the touch of a button. Our Map Man books, which are read alouds in either English or Spanish. I could toggle back and forth between English and Spanish. Additional resources that we have available are apps. So everything here is literally the touch of a button. And you can use these to help support um, the instruction and you know, facilitate the instruction very, very quickly in your classroom. Hey, Before Tracy. I, yep, I was just going to say, any questions? <laughs> It's Cassandra. I don't know if this one has been answered because they get buried very quickly, but Caitlin has asked, um, she says she has a login. She was really hoping to see the first unit and see how the curriculum starts uh, um, the year off. Is that okay, you can show her real quick? Uh, I can. Um, basically, I'd have to look. Do you know what page it starts on, Elizabeth? You probably have it memorized when I do not. Let me go look here. Uh, loading. Loading my slow internet. I actually even had my husband get me my own internet connection and it's still super, super slow today. There we go. Page 10. Thank you. Page 10. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't have page numbers. 
memorized Memor just yet. So basically it starts with a week at a glance. You'll see that the focus for the week is school and friends names. So it's a quick overview of the week. And then you have all your learning domains here, your language and literacy, readiness and writing, numbers and math, oral language, science and social studies, as well as technology. And here's those suggestions for three-year-olds that somebody was referring to later. I mean, earlier, we also always include icons so you can see what is being taught within that individual domain. So you can see the heart is a social emotional um, learning objective and you can see within this language and literacy lesson, there is social emotional um, oral language or language and communication. So if I scoot to the next page, you will actually see unit one week one day one um, and this is your two page spread for that day. Um, but the week at a glance is probably the best place for you to start to kind of see, okay, where do we start with this curriculum? What are some of the objectives? What are some of the learning domains that we're covering? Um, and what is actually within those little uh, individual lessons? So that's what you see right there on this, on this page. And that is at the start of every week. You'll get that week at, at a glance. I hope that answers it. But if you have a login, you'll be able to see every single week. You'll be able to see every single lesson. You'll be able to see every single digital asset that's associated with that lesson as well. Did you want to talk about the circular and have that uploaded or the, or the circle progress the circle assessment? Uh, sure. I will let. Um, I will let Virginia drop that correlation in there, but I will let Dr. DeWitt talk to the um, assessments while I, well, first let me mention sure. that we assess daily, um, I'll, as long as I'm on this page, Elizabeth, I'll, I'll talk about it a little, a little bit. Um, at, within, yeah, okay. within every lesson, we check for understanding. So four times a day, we're evaluating students' understanding of the concept that has been taught been taught, you see that little check mark right there. It's a check for understanding to, um, to kind of gauge um, their level of understanding to decide, do I need to reteach that? Do I need to modify it? Do I need to um, enrich it in some way? So that is done on a daily basis. On a, and on a, at least a weekly basis, we use observation checklists, which I will jump into while you talk about them, Elizabeth. Sure. Um, I'm happy to. So we have the daily, um, and I say daily, but it's that four times a day where we're really looking at, at point of use, are the children really understanding what's happening and giving teachers an opportunity to redirect if needed or to add on because every moment is a teachable moment. Every moment, just take that away. Every moment is a teachable moment. And so what we're asking teachers to do with check for understanding is to say, do they really understand what I'm saying? Or do I need to switch it around, find another way to convey this information? We have to understand when preschoolers come into the classroom, they don't have the experience that we do. And what we're doing is pouring out ourselves for them so that they can be phenomenal in kindergarten and going forward. Um, and so check for understanding is really just opening the door to, to help teachers, especially brand new teachers, uh, understand at point of use, do my children understand? And if they don't, you know what? I need to, I need to back up. So we have that. With the um, classroom observations, we recommend it at least once a week, but as myself, I do it three times a week, but that's just me when I was in my classroom and what you want to do is be able to assess where children are in those developmental standards and outcome benchmarks because we want them to be successful. Our overall goal at Get Set for School is that every single child walks into kindergarten excited, equipped, and successful. That's all we want because it's what, what I wanted for my children what you should want for your own children and what we all want for all children to be equipped to be confident and successful and that's what gets up for school does what we've taken is just bare bones developmental research 
and provided that for you with through our assessments, through our curriculum, and all those tools so that your children, your preschool children, can go through pre-K loving it, loving learning so much they don't even recognize they're learning, and then being so successful when they walk into kindergarten, they're blowing it out of the water, and they come back to you and say, thank you. Thank you for believing in me, because that's what this is. So it, Elizabeth, I'm sorry to interrupt really quickly before we run out of time. Could you quickly talk about the actual assessments and then I will have Virginia um, and how we align with Circle and I'll have Virginia drop that alignment document into the chat box. Sure, absolutely. So with Circle, you can look at the alignment, but what we have with what you see here on the screen is our benchmark assessments, which are the ones that come at the beginning, middle, and end of the year, just like Dibbles, and they're aligned to developmental standards. And even if you have developmental benchmark assessments like um, Brigance, Patel, they're aligned to those. And so what we have for you is a condensed version so you can see that your children are being successful. And by the way, guys, we are the only company that offers a ready, uh, readiness assessment for writing. So that is unique to Get Set for School. And you can see it on my screen right now. Very simple to implement. Um, there's resources here that you can see right there that are for the students. And then there's also resources to administer the assessment as well. So just as a, as a quick side note, I'm sorry I interrupted. I see that, um, Elizabeth, but I see that time coming dangerously close to that 20 minutes. I understand. Thank you, Tracy. Yep. I'm sorry. I get on no my worries. soapbox I and I will just keep going. Sorry, guys. Any other questions, Virginia or Lori or Cassandra that are there in the chat box that we need to address? I don't see anything else. Okay, perfect. I am just going to remind everybody as we come to a close, if you are interested in having access to that pre-K interactive teaching tool um, or to have physical samples, or if you would like an in-depth presentation that is specific to your school district, that's going to be much more informative than uh, obviously we can possibly do in 20 minutes. We would love to um, share that with you. You can drop your email address into the chat box and we'll capture that and make sure that somebody reaches out to you. Okay. Awesome, that being Jesse, said, that's, that's wonderful. Um, we are on to our next block. Um, feel free to stay in if you want to hear more or if your question, if you have more in-depth questions that they didn't get to, um, you're welcome to stay. Um, other than that, we will get ready for the next block, the next session. chit-chatting beforehand. I am a former preschool director, so I love talking pre-K. I have also used many different pre-K um, systems, so I love talking pre-K. I also want to share with you that I do have some colleagues that are helping me monitor chat because once I share my screen, I cannot see the chat box. I have Virginia Nugent, who is also another territory manager here in Texas. I have Lori Wilson, who is our um, adoption expert extraordinaire here at Learning Without Tears, Get Set for School. I also have Dr. Deli uh, Elizabeth, Dr. Elizabeth DeWitt, who is the like it. <laughs> leading contributor to this program, um, content contributor to this program. I see Tara De Santiago on as well, but I think she's in and out. So um, thank you, Virginia, for sharing our contact information there in the chat box. With that being said, I'm going to stop my camera so that I can make sure um, my screen sharing is optimal. And I'm going to share a quick little video about overview of Learning Without Tears Get Set for School curriculum, and then share another couple of things with you that I think separate us from other curriculum, and then I'll open it up for questions. From letters to numbers, from the space to the sea, it's time to discover the pre-K possibilities. I want to be a scientist. I want to be a teacher. I want to be an actor. 
As little learners enter the classroom for the first time with big dreams, Get Set for School, the new and complete pre-K program from Learning Without Tears helps them explore, learn, and build a foundation for success. Through music and movement and puzzles and play, Get Set for School brings the genius of making learning and teaching simple and fun to every child and educator. Imagine all of the possibilities in your classroom with expert-backed pre-writing, social-emotional, and interactive instruction, developmentally appropriate lessons that break difficult concepts into simple tasks, hands-on multi-sensory materials that bring learning to life, and research-based cross-curricular strategies. With the right tools for a strong foundation, Get Set for School increases the educational possibilities to prepare pre-K children for kindergarten and all of the readiness, writing, social-emotional, math, science, and social studies lessons ahead. So let's play, sing, and write our ABCs. It's time to discover all of the pre-K possibilities. Increase the pre-K possibilities with the new Get Set for School program. Contact us for more information. Speaking of contact, I know that Virginia dropped our information into um, the chat box there. So you have that information. I want to share with you what we believe separates um, the Get Set from School program from other systems that you may be reviewing. And the number one thing for me as a former preschool director is the manipulatives and the multi-sensory tools. They truly are unique to this curriculum. Um, and it is very, um, uh, they're developmentally appropriate. They're not your average counting bears and linking cubes and things that you know you can purchase at any teacher supply store. These are unique to our curriculum. Um, and I'm going to drag over what some of those look like here to this screen. Um, these manipulatives, we believe, are essential to to help those students that are going to be coming into your pre-K classrooms, not only next year, but for years to come. I want you to think about those students right now that will be coming to your classrooms next year. What are they doing right this very minute, this second, while you're giving me your precious time to listen to this presentation? I would venture to get guess that the majority of them are not in a former preschool setting, um, that they are probably at home um, while parents are working from home or in a setting where maybe they are not getting that rich language development or that social emotional, I mean, that social interaction with peers. They're not learning that academic behavior that they need in order to be successful for school. So what better way to meet those unique developmental needs than from a multi-sensory approach, um, hands-on approach that can be modified uh, depending upon the student that you're working with. This is not a watered down uh, kindergarten program. This absolutely um, is a program that uses these very, very unique manipulatives to teach all of those important concepts. So I did that. Oops, sorry, Cassandra, that was six minutes. But I will go ahead and stop sharing this. And That's okay, I was letting you go. <laughs> <laughs> go to the pre-K interactive teaching tool. But before I do that, let's see if anybody has any questions at all um, before I jump into showing them some of the lessons and the resources that they have at their fingertips. Any questions so far? I see none in the chat. I do have a question. Sure. This is Stacy DeHoyos. I'm with Happily Development Center in Eagle Mountain, Saginaw. Hi, Stacy. And my question, hi. My question is about um, the if the assessment piece. Yep. Um, because we use CLI for our assessment, okay. um, and we're required to use what's on the commissioner's list to meet that high quality standard. So, does um, does this program? guide us towards those um, knowing where the, you know, where we will find those different uh, skills that we'll be assessing. 
I love the question. Thank you so much. Um, Virginia, if you would be so kind as to drop into the chat box, since I can't, the alignment to circle, um, because our assessments do align to circle. We have a, a kind of three different opportunities to evaluate um, student um, understanding and retention of skills. The very first one is um, checking for understanding on a daily basis. So within each uh, lesson that you can see here on the screen, there's kind of that check for understanding, which allows you to observe and evaluate. Do they understand? Do they have a good understanding? And then gives the teachers the ability to um, kind of modify or enrich the activity, enrich the activity depending upon what their observation is. In addition to that daily assessment, we have periodic what I would call, uh, well, observation, I guess, is the best way. We offer um, observation checklists. Um, and I think Elizabeth mentioned earlier that she used these several times a week in her classroom. Um, my teachers typically used weekly observation checklists. So these are um, observation checklists as they relate to literacy, math, readiness and writing, social emotional skills, as you can see here right in the beginning, listens and responds to directions and questions. This observation tool would be something that you would be using um, probably on a weekly basis. And then the other assessment piece actually is our benchmarks. We have those for language and literacy, numbers and math, and we're the only company that has anything uh, Renia's assessment for writing. These are designed to be used beginning and middle and end of year. And hopefully Virginia dropped that document, that alignment to circle. And while we're talking about these assessments specifically, I'm going to ask Dr. DeWitt to jump in and um, share some inform additional information if she'd like to right there. Sure. Um yeah, I'm a little bit of an overachiever. So when I was teaching preschool, yes, I did the um, observation checklist more than once a week. I was fortunate to have a teaching assistant and I had a clipboard for her and uh, I'd have her keep records as I was teaching. And that could be circle time. That would be any whole group, uh, you know, activity. Now when we broke out into small groups, I kept my own documentation. She kept hers. You know, and we compile those. But what you have in front of you um, from Get Set for School is I just want you to stop and think for a moment. Everything is aligned to, a, to development. So whether you use ours or you use Circle or you use something else, as long as it's aligned to development for four-year-olds, it all makes sense and it should because when I first started teaching over 20 years ago, we didn't have all of this. And I had to look for things that were aligned to development for four-year-olds. And so what we're providing for you is, you know, quick, easy documentation for children who are four years old, preparing for kindergarten, we want them to be confident, skilled, and ready. And that's what you have in front of you. And uh, if you have to use something else, it will totally work with our program because when you're aligned to developmental research for four-year-olds, it doesn't matter what assessment you use when your curriculum is aligned that way. Tracy? I'm going to see if there's any other questions before I jump out of the assessment piece. So where I'm, what I'm sharing with you on my screen right now um, is I am in the pre-K interactive digital teaching tool. This is the teacher component or the teacher platform that helps facilitate planning and implementation of the curriculum. And the reason I took you here is because this will allow you to kind of see what those lessons look like, what the teacher's guides look like, what the student activity um, and resources and apps and all of that type of thing look like within this curriculum. As part of the digital review process, you actually can have access to this as well. Um, all you have to do is drop your email address into 
um, the chat box and we will be glad to give you and every single member of your committee access to this tool to not only to review the resources like the teacher's guides and the activity books and the assessments, but also to give you the opportunity, frankly, to try them yourself. You'll have access here where you can literally do some of these lessons if that's what you wanna do to kind of pilot a lesson. It's the easiest way to do it is right here from this um, digital component. Where I'm at right now is on the teacher, the actual physical lesson. Let me go back to page 10. Um, within teacher, this teacher's guide, what you'll see at the beginning of each week is a week at a glance. So the focus for the week, kind of a snapshot of what concepts are gonna be taught for that week, including all of the domains here on the left-hand side, and then your week in a view. We have used, consciously used all of these little icons to help you see, okay, well, within this language and literacy lesson, what is it that we're learning? Well, we're incorporating social, I should probably make that a little bit bigger. We're incorporating social emotional um, concepts. We're doing some um, math. We're doing all of that within science, all of that within a language and literacy lesson. That's your week at a glance. And then once you get into the lessons for that day, this is it, guys. This is it, a two-page spread with your four explicit lessons that are being taught um, in the domains that you see there on the screen. And then the widgets that you see over here on the side are the assets that we've kind of associated with that lesson, just some of them, there's many, many more, but it literally is a click of a button. So if, a, if a, um, in this particular case, um, you know, the this lesson down here for readiness and writing is the hello song, but it's also a social emotional lesson about greeting um, children and there's a song associated with it. So all I have to do is, well, this is actually the children singing the song. Uh, hello song. One, two, you know what to do. So it literally is a click of a button so that teachers do not have to spend the time uh, that was a struggle for me as a preschool director. I felt like they spent more time gathering things than actually teaching the lesson sometimes. So everything is right here um, at the click of a button or the touch of a button um, right here with all these little widgets on the side. Before I go further, I wanna see if there's any questions at all. We had a question for Elizabeth regarding three-year-olds and lessons for the three-year-old students. I'm happy to address that real quick before, okay. before um, sh because I'm here, if you don't mind, Elizabeth. Um, three, these are aligned to the TPGs, which are, and Elizabeth can get deeper into that, which are for typical, typically four and five-year-olds. However, we know that there's many, many preschool classrooms that have three-year-olds as well. And like Elizabeth, what you said earlier, I also taught in a multi-age setting of three, fours, and fives. You can see here at this week at a glance, we do offer suggestions for three-year-olds um, right here at this week at a glance. On the daily lessons, we also offer some more support as well as what we would consider ELL strategies. And I think those are beautiful accommodations for three-year-olds. That is a great way. The other, um, I think, uh, place that I would direct you to for that would be in volume one, where we talk about or where we introduce and describe our multi-sensory resources, because those resources can be modified to meet the needs of every student. Three-year-olds, special needs students, uh, dual language, all of those resources are right there um, with an explanation on how to use them. In addition, when we come to do your professional development, we're going to make sure that you understand those resources and how to use them from a differentiation standpoint. Now I'll let you jump in, Elizabeth. Yeah, Tracy, I thought that was beautiful. That's a beautiful explanation. Um, what we have, um, based on you know, Tracy experienced mine in having three, four, and five-year-olds. So what I'm going to tell you is when I had three, four, and five-year-olds, I knew my expectation for my three-year-olds was not the same. And so my expectation for them based on developmental research 
was that they would do all the manipulatives, but I didn't have expectation for writing on paper. I hope that makes sense to you. Write it down. I didn't have expectation. If they were ready, I was ready. But, and, and let me say, three-year-olds are sponges. They soak it all in and I was shocked at how quickly they grabbed it all and it all came together. But not every three-year-old is the same. So within our program, we allow that flexibility because we know that not every three-year-old is ready. And we know that, you know, we need to offer flexibility. And we do that because, you know, with our program, we start from the foundation of developmental research for fine motor development, which nobody else does. Nobody, I don't care who you're talking about, nobody does what we do. Um, and then we build from that. When you focus on that, they have a confidence and a skill level that is unmatched. And so um, what, what my first thing is when you have three-year-olds is you don't ask them to write it on paper. You do all the manipulatives, you do everything else. However, at the same time, you need to look at your three-year-olds at where they are because you'll have three-year-olds who are ready to put it on paper. Again, that comes down to assessment and using your professional judgment and knowing your students. We don't know every single one of your students. We just know overall, and we are here to help you make the best decision. I think for, to thank you, um, Elizabeth, I think Virginia had some questions about the Read Aloud Library, um, I, which I want to absolutely share with you. So included in this um, adoption or in this kit is going to be a very robust Read Aloud Library in both English and in Spanish. Um, some of the Spanish are truly authentic Spanish um, Read Alouds. It's going to be a combination of classics. It's going to be a combination of fiction and nonfiction, as well as, um, um, as I said, in either English and Sp or Spanish. And we also have a dual language option as well for these kits, which I don't think I mentioned earlier. Um, in addition to those re that read aloud library that comes with the program, we also have our Matt Man book series that actually has a read aloud embedded within kit. Um, if, and if you're at all familiar with learning about tears. We gave Matt Man a hat. What would Matt Man do? Turn the page and we'll show you. So this is a beautiful resource. Again, um, if you're teaching face-to-face -face or if you're teaching remotely, I love this um, option. And again, you all you have to do is toggle over here to Spanish um, and it will be a Spanish read aloud that you can use directly within pre-kit. I hope that answers the question, Virginia, about, about the read aloud library. 36 books well, and, and, and the Matt Man books. Well, that concludes this session. So sorry, the time just seems to be flying faster and faster. Um, so again, if your uh, question was not answered, feel free to stay for the next session. Um, and uh, also the recording will be sent to Learning Without Tears. So if they did not get to your uh, question, they can email you if you provide it your email address. Thank you so much for attending. And we'll get ready for the next Thanks session. Yes.
Hello, thank you for coming to our final session of the day. My name is Cassandra Pinato. I am a Texas Education Agency employee. I work in the review and adoption unit. Um, I help facilitate the review and adoption of instructional materials for standard alignment, and I am the liaison for Learning Without Tears. So I am very happy to be here um, facilitating their breakout room. And with that, if you have any questions that um, feel free to unmute yourself or even un, uh, turn on your camera and ask the questions, or if you feel more comfortable putting your questions in the chat, include your email address so that in the event they cannot get to your question, they can email you a response after this is over. And with that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to Tracy. Thank you, Cassandra. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Tracy Sloper, and I am one of the territory managers for Learning Without Tears Get Set for School um, here in Texas. I am also a former preschool director, so I love everything pre-K. I've actually used many of the programs in the past that you will be considering. And so I want to share with you today what I believe from my experience and what we know separates Learning Without Tears Get Set for School program from other programs that you may be considering. I also have with me a couple of colleagues that are gonna help me monitor the chat box so that I can focus on the presentation, this little short presentation that I'm going to do for you. I have Virginia Nugent, who is another territory manager. I have um, here in Texas, I have Tara de Santiago from here in Texas. I have Lori Wilson, who is our adoption specialist extraordinaire from Learning Without Tears and works very closely with Cassandra. And I also have Dr. Elizabeth DeWitt. Dr. DeWitt was the leading contributor to the content of this curriculum, and she will be able to answer any in-depth questions that you might have. Um, I am going to start with a really quick video on an overview of the Get Set for School curriculum, share a few things that I think separates um, us from other programs, and then I will open it up for questions. Oops, probably helps if I share my screen. Let me do that real quickly. I was just going to watch it there on my own and enjoy it. I would have stopped you. <laughs> <laughs> from letters to numbers, from the space to the sea, it's time to discover the pre-K possibilities. I want to be a scientist. I want to be a teacher. I want to be an actor. As little learners enter the classroom for the first time with big dreams, Get Set for School, the new and complete pre-K program from Learning Without Tears, helps them explore, learn, and build a foundation for success. Through music and movement and puzzles and play, Get Set for School brings the genius of making learning and teaching simple and fun to every child and educator. Imagine all of the possibilities in your classroom with expert-backed pre-writing, social-emotional, and interactive instruction, developmentally appropriate lessons that break difficult concepts into simple tasks, hands-on multi-sensory materials that bring learning to life, and research-based cross-curricular strategies. With the right tools for a strong foundation, Get Set for School increases the educational possibilities to prepare pre-K children for kindergarten and all of the readiness, writing, social-emotional, math, science, and social studies lessons ahead. So let's play, sing, and write our ABCs. It's time to discover all of the pre-K possibilities. Increase the pre-K possibilities with the new Get Set for School program. Contact us for more information. So let me start by sharing with you what we know separates our program from other programs that you will be considering. And the very first thing is our unique and purposeful multi-sensory resources. You guys already have things like uh, counters and bears and linking cubes and all of those things in your classroom. But what we bring to the table is our unique multi-sensory resources. Whoops, let me get away from there. Um, those resources are what we believe um, helps 
these children so much in the early childhood classroom. And I'm going to bring this over to the screen so you can kind of see what those resources look like. Um, I want you to think about those children that are in your classrooms that are coming to your classrooms this next year and think about what they're doing right now. Many of them, most of them probably are not in a formal preschool setting because of COVID. So those children are going to have a very unique developmental need when they come to your classrooms. And what better way to meet those needs than through hands-on, multi-sensory, developmentally appropriate, tiered resources that can be used to help teach them not only literacy, math, and social studies, and science skills, but also social emotional learning. So I did my five minutes. I'm going to open it up for questions right away. And then if there aren't any questions, then I'm going to go ahead and share um, some of the teacher's guide and teaching resources that are available and some of the lessons themselves. I don't see any questions in the chat. Okay, then I'm going to take silence as a no. And so I'm going to jump right into um, our teacher's guide. Where I'm at right now, guys, is in the pre-kit, our pre-K interactive teaching tool. This is the teacher platform, the digital component that will allow you to have access or you can have access to your teacher's guides, activity books, um, read alouds, things of that nature. The reason I'm sharing this is obviously it's the easiest way for me to show you what those lessons look like, but I do want to let you know that you too can have access to this as part of the digital review process. All you need to do is drop your email address into the chat box and we will capture that and make sure that you and every one of your committee members gets access to it so they can start reviewing the lessons and reviewing some of the resources. We are also happy to send you a small sample box so that you can actually put your hands on some of the pieces of those um, uh, hands-on multi-sensory resources that um, I referenced just a few minutes ago. Um, what you see on the screen right now is, um, I'm going to go back a page. So I am actually in teacher guide number two. We only have two teacher guides. It was important to us that the um, we made this as simple concise and flexible as we possibly could. So we have two teachers guide. The first volume introduces the curriculum. It also introduces you to the multi-sensory resources, talks about um, classroom setup, scheduling, classroom management, things of that nature. Volume two, which is where I'm at right now, is the teacher's guide that your teachers will use on a daily basis. This is what they will use to facilitate and to implement the program. Where I'm at is in teachers uh, in this teacher's guide is on unit one, week one. This is the week at a glance. So on the two page spread for planning purposes, they can kind of see their whole week at a glance. The icons up here at the top indicate what, um, what benchmark or what we're learning within each one of these domains. Um, so those little icons will indicate to you, is it a social, as their social emotional um, lessons being covered here within this language and literacy lesson. The domains over here on the left are language and literacy, readiness and writing, numbers and math, oral language science and social studies, as well as technology. And here's where you'll find those suggestions for your three-year-olds. It's right there at your fingertips so that you can modify your lessons for any three-year-olds that you have um, in your classroom. As we move away from the week at a glance, I wanna take you to the actual lesson for unit one, week one, day one. This is your first day's lessons. And as you can see, it's a two page spread. That's it guys. These are your explicit lessons for that day. Concise, easy to follow. But what it also allows is that flexibility for teachers to plan those lessons that are tried and true, the ones that they love. So if you have a teacher, boy, did I used to love the heck out of Dr. Seuss week. There was so much that we can do. As a teacher, I would still be able to use those tried and true and fun activities for Dr. Seuss week, um, but still be able to 
implement these explicit lessons at the same time within my classroom. The widgets that you see over here on the side are the assets that we have associated with those lessons. As you can see right here, readiness and writing lesson, the objective is for children to learn how to greet each other when they meet new people. And right here is a very quick video and song that you can use to help. Hello song. So very simple, click of a button right there. Before I move into the next, I'll see if there's any questions at all. You right. No questions, Tracy. All right, good to go. All right, your student activity books. Again, with your access to the pre-K interactive teaching tool, you'll be able to literally flip through every single page of the student, the uh, readiness and writing my first school book, you can literally flip through every single page um, and kind of see what that setup looks like. Um, along with any of our other um, student activity books, the I know my numbers in the my book. The map man book series is one of our favorites. This is um, where you will find our map man book series that are also read alouds. If we gave Matt Man a hat, what would Matt Man do? Turn the page and we'll show you. What I should have mentioned earlier is that every teacher with the, um, with the adoption will get access to pre-kid um, and that each teacher will also have the ability of being able to toggle back and forth between the- Si le diéramos un sombrero a Matt Man, ¿qué haría? Da vuelta a la página y lo the verás. English and the Spanish version. Um, there's been lots of questions about assessments, so I'll go ahead and cover those right here. We have opportunities for assessment throughout our curriculum. The, we do daily um, assessments, I guess, from the sense of we are evaluating retention and understanding of skills through daily assessment built right into the lesson. So it's called check for understanding and it's observation, which I'm spinning here because of my internet, observation for um, the lesson that has been taught that day. You can see right here, check for understanding uh, so that we can immediately assess a student's understanding of the concepts that we've learned. In addition, we have classroom observation tools for literacy and math, not, um, language, um, math, um, writing. Um, and within these are your ob um, opportunity to observe children in their environment um, to kind of look for, um, you know, indicators, uh, listens to and responds to directions and questions. This is a wonderful tool to use as frequently as you'd like. I know that Elizabeth mentioned she used it three times a week. Typically, my teachers would use these tools about once a week to add to a student portfolio. And then the final is our benchmark assessments. These assessments would be done typically beginning, middle, and end of year and align very nicely with uh, align with circle. In fact, Virginia is going to drop into the uh, chat box the alignment document, um, which you can also find on our website, the um, circle alignment document. So these are designed to be um, implemented or used beginning, middle, and end of the school year. And by the way, as a side note, we are the only program, the only uh, system that has a readiness assessment for writing. And we know how valuable that is because of how um, writing relates to emergent reading and emergent literacy. And then of course your additional apps, your additional resources here that you can use in the classroom on your interactive whiteboard or to use from a distance learning standpoint um, if you're having to teach children remotely. So that is it in a very quick nutshell. I am going to open up to any questions or if anybody wants me to go to a specific area here, I'm happy to do it for you. That was lovely, Tracy, thank you. Virginia is also gonna drop in our contact information. Again, as part of the digital review process, we want you to have access to this pre-K interactive teaching tool. 
Number one, obviously to review the resources that are here that will be at your fingertips. But more importantly for me, I would love for you to go in and actually try some of these activities. I would love for you to try some of these wet, dry, try activities with your little um, scholars as they're learning letter formation so that you can see the interaction and the, and the joy that they have when they use these resources. In addition to that, we are also very, very happy to provide you with physical samples so that you can get your hands on those um, multiple um, multi-sensory resources that you see here um, on the screen. In addition, each kit is going to come with a robust um, read aloud library for your classroom in either English or in Spanish, which is a combination of um, nonfiction, fiction, your classics. You can see, I think if you really squint your eyes a little bit, you might be able to see um, the cat in the hat up there, um, the very hungry caterpillars, some of those classics that you love to have in your classroom. And again, nonfiction and fiction, kind of a combination of those. Any questions, Virginia, Lori? No questions yet. You're doing a great job. Everybody's tired. It's the end of the day. They're probably tired of hearing people talk, right? <laughs> we would love also the opportunity to come to your school or your district or to meet with you remotely to talk about the specific needs and do a personalized presentation to make sure that we're meeting the needs of your particular district. Cassandra and I were talking about that earlier. Every district's focus is different and there's so much to cover, really hard to do that in 20 minutes. We'd be very happy to set up a presentation for your district um, to meet your specific questions and needs. Tracy, we did get a question. Can you talk a little bit about our alphabetical order? For, order? for writing? I don't know if that's- I think so. Sure. Just okay. as the order of the alphabet. So why don't we go with writing? Yep, I'm, I'm assuming it has to do with our readiness and writing. We do teach letters in a developmental sequence based upon how strokes develop and which strokes are the easiest and which strokes are the most difficult. So the very first letter that we teach, frankly, in, um, in pre-K is the letter L because the vertical and the horizontal stroke are the easiest strokes. So you can see our developmental teaching order here. I am going to step back and saying that is our developmental order. This is the way that is going to be easiest and fastest to teach those letters. However, we do understand that that sometimes doesn't align with your phonological um, teaching order or what you're doing in some other... Uh, uh, I, I guess some people want to be able to personalize that, I guess is the best way to say that. And you can personalize it based upon um, what meets your needs. But this is a developmental teaching order based upon which strokes are easiest and similar strokes. So you see all of these here have that circular C stroke. Um, so we group them together to make them easiest. The diagonal stroke is the most difficult stroke for students to learn, um, and it often doesn't integrate until about five or six years old, so we teach those letters last. I hope you were referring to readiness and writing, because that's where I went with that. And then for Spanish, please. Spanish. The Spanish order of the alphabet. Okay. Spanish order is the same for capital letters. Um, as you can see, there's a slight difference when we come to lowercase letters. And I can let Elizabeth talk to that really quickly while I try and get there if she'd like to. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, overall development for children, there's a progression based on research. So every developmental assessment, whether it's the Bergantz, the Battelle, the LAP, it doesn't matter. So um, any of those, so those are children who are coming towards preschool uh, and even in preschool that if you ever receive a child that has had a developmental assessment uh, that's three, four or five years old in the preschool realm, um, they're going to have a developmental assessment and the Battelle, the Grants, LAP, one of those is gonna happen. But in those, if you'll notice, when you look at fun motor, they all have the same progression. Can they do vertical? 
horizontal curves and diagonals. And that's based on gazelle research from the 1940s, but that is still relevant today based on pediatricians, psychologists, OTs, you name it. They all follow that developmental progression that's been identified. And that's what we follow because it is super easy. And as a former teacher myself, I tried before that method, before the get set for school method, where I thought starting with A, just like everybody else is what you do. But when you start with what's developmentally appropriate, it changes everything. Your children are truly successful. They're starting from the basis, the foundation, from the beginning of where they can do things, fine motor wise. It's not about their cognitive ability, it's about where they find motor. And we bridge the gap, we pull them together and kids are successful and they enjoy school and think that, that pre-K is a party and it should be every day because we're setting the foundation for loving learning. So in a nutshell, guys, we do introduce the letters in the same order in English and in Spanish from a writing component. So if that's what you were um, asking, you can see in lowercase, um, C O S V W and T are the first C O S V and W are the first ones that we teach in Spanish, um, in English. We, if I try go back over here and again, you can review all of this just by, um, taking, um, logging into the, um, pre-K interactive teaching tool, again, COSV, W, and T. From a writing standpoint, we're teaching them based upon strokes, based upon what is easiest, based upon the COSV, W, and T are the very first lowercase letters we teach because they look just like their capital counterparts. They're just a little bit smaller. So if we've already taught the capitals, teaching the lowercase will be easy. I hope that answers the question. Yes, good job team learning without tears. Thank you participants for coming. Um, they gave you some links in the chat if you want to um, take advantage and look at those and reach out to them if you have any more questions. I will also give them the recording so they can answer any more questions that they didn't maybe not if they did not get to them I cannot speak. Anyhow again thank you. Um, Tracy, Lori, uh, Learning Without Tears, if you wanted to stay on just a minute with me, that'd be great. I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. Sure. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Yes. Thank Thanks, you so everyone. Much. And fantastic, Cassandra. I'll be your host. Thank you. Um, let's see. Okay. So, oh, there's one more person. Okay, so I have Lori, Tara, Dr. DeWitt, Virginia, and Tracy, correct? Yep. Okay. That's all the LW. How do, go? how do you think? Other than the time. Yeah, I think, think that's it? really, I think that's really the only thing that's so tough. Hey, Tara, I think it's just the time element and we have to do with, you know, have to deal with what you have to deal with. I, my husband has a gr very great saying, it is what it is. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the questions help us know where to um, reach out to these districts to give them more detail or more information. So it's going to be really helpful to have some of that chat and some of those email addresses so we can say, I really want to take you to the assessments and show you specifically what it is that we're talking about. So, because um, that seemed to be one of the biggest questions, don't you think, Tara? I do. So assessments was really popular. Lots of questions yep. about Spanish. That was popular as well. So some specific questions about that differentiated instruction. So it is, it's a lot of very specific to obviously some of the districts on, right? So yeah. Okay. Okay. I agree. Well, I thought, um, I thought it was great. I mean, I have to say that and I apologize for not having my camera. I live out way okay. out the country and so <laughs> okay. uh, my internet is, is not, with your bandwidth for sure it <laughs> does it does so so that can be a part of the conversation my my picture's not here 
but um, I appreciate the facilitation, Cassandra. Um, oh, you're welcome. I think you did a fabulous job in uh, facilitating the beginning and the end, and you know, and anything in between. That's time. <laughs> we all, yes, we all appreciate it, uh, you know, having us right on time because we are those who want to get on our soapbox and we can't get off. And I thank you for being so gracious and keeping oh, you're us welcome. on time. And I thought you were a lovely host. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you guys can think of anything that you want to share, maybe we could do something better. If you think of something, send me an email, please let me know. Um, because like I said, this is our first time. We are going to do more of these, I'm sure. And um, any of your feedback from a publisher's point of view would be so helpful. Sure. Yeah. Sandra, it's Tara. And I'd love to hear too, if you hear anything, um, since you stuck with us the whole time, like about what happened in any of the others. I mean, you know, how, did we do so? I mean, was everybody doing similar things in the sessions? Do you think based on what you heard, we provided enough information? So any feedback like that that you get, we'd be interested in as well if you think it would um, improve or help um, help schools identify, you know, what it is they're looking for within our curriculum. I'd love to hear that too. So I'd be curious okay. to, you know, so, know. Yeah, see, one of the things that I was wondering, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say anything we could have done better. If you hear of something that was super helpful to attendees and really drew them in, if there's something that we could have done differently, um, we are okay. perpetual learners and we're wide open. Uh, seriously, okay. we are wide open to learning. Um, so yeah, anything sure. that can help us grow, we'd be happy to know. I'm sorry, Lori, go ahead. I was just going to ask if, um, Cassie, if you know on the yesterday or today, I didn't get to listen in much today, if um, Melissa spoke at all about the other ESCs or some ESCs who were canceling their presentations because of this particular vendor fair, um, you know, obviously you know that 20 minutes is not long enough to really present a pre-K program right. because there is so much to review um, so I didn't know if, if anything was spoken about that and if we might expect those ESCs who cancel to call and say, oh, we really do want to have you back to uh, present. Yeah, um, I was in and out with the, the session this morning because I had some other things I had to deal with. And um, I did not hear that she um, went into great detail on that. I do know that one of my other publishers did also bring that up. So that is something I brought up with Melissa as well. So I will follow up with that and make sure that um, I'll let you know what, what we find out what's going on with that. Because yeah, okay, great. Um, they were canceling when we found out we have this, but like you said, 20 minutes not is not same. enough. Time. Right. And it's just not the well, same. Right. In the timeline, yeah. whenever they found oh. out, you know, when, when region 20 canceled, I think we were all shocked um, because it was so fast as the turnaround and, and trying to get a hold of districts and making sure that they were aware <laughs> it was it was right. kind of crazy <laughs> but this yeah. i think overall the the sessions and the way that y'all composed all of this was really helpful for the districts yeah i think it really I, was I, and uh cassie this is elizabeth so the other thing is before i was a curriculum person i was in sales and the shortest presentation i ever had was 25 minutes and and, well, and I have you. to <laughs> yeah I, I know so I have to applaud Tracy for the time because I thought 25 minutes was brutal and and that was years <laughs> ago I mean this is over 10 years ago but I want as feedback it's it's not being critical I'm just saying in five minutes there's no way for a comprehensive program to really convey their value in five minutes. There's just not a way. Right. And so right. that's and my professional and caring feedback. I'm not being critical or unkind. I'm just saying oh, in my no. years of experience from going from a teacher to a presenter, and when I remember hearing you have 25 minutes, I had a panic attack because I was like, oh, 25 <laughs> minutes? You know, yes. and, and I applaud Tracy for what she did today um, several times 
more than several. Um, I just, that's part of my feedback. It's not critical. It's just that there is no way to convey your value when it's comprehensive. I understand if you're a supplemental, like if it's just math or it's just this, but five minutes for a full pre-K program, that I, I do not envy Tracy whatsoever. She was, she had a very difficult um, position. She did a fabulous job. And yeah, I was going to uh, say I got that. it. I heard her. <laughs> hey guys, I that had a video one today. I had to do a 10 minute one today. That was impossible. Total of 10 minutes. So that uh, the video that you showed at the beginning was very insightful. I really like that. I'm glad you oh, had that helpful. as a backup. Well, that was, mm -hmm. a last minute. That was a great way to start. Yeah. When you said I had five instead of 10, I thought, oh, got to turn on a dime here. So that's exactly yeah. what I did. So we're good. We're good to go. You did great. Well done, Tracy. I love that too. Great but job. You really did. Yeah. But Cassie, but, really Cassie I just wanted you to know that it's just that we're not being critical, but if you're talking about going forward, how <laughs> could you guys help publishers? Five minutes is brutal. I mean, like the biggest brutal I have ever heard for a presentation. Yeah. And I mean, Q&A, yes, it needs a, a nice chunk of time, but it's so hard to put your value in five minutes. That's all. Okay. Sorry, I've, I'm off my that's soapbox. Okay. I'm backing up. This is your time to tell me. So that's good. If you think of anything more, if you want to put that in writing, feel free to do that. That that would go. So um, that'd be good. So. Um, they, the, it sounds like the majority of the people that were here today hadn't even had a chance to review through the TEA website. That's just an assumption that I'm going with. So um, we want to make sure that they get the opportunity to either use um, what's, you know, their access through TEA or get physical samples or, and, or, and I guess digital samples here. And I think that we conveyed that message as best as we could in that short period of time. And hopefully um, we'll have the opportunity to share some of that. So the only thing that I would ask is if they reach out, you just direct them to one of us so that we can make sure that they get, they get their samples Absolutely. that they, that they, um, Absolutely. they want and need. Um, and again, yeah. we'll, get some, we'll get some presentations out of it. No big deal. Okay. Well, thank you again. Great job. And um, we're going to go ahead and end the meeting from here. Have a All wonderful right. Thank evening. you. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Lori, I'll be talking to you a lot. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.